Okay, and now the one that everybody's been waiting for, Lloyd and his favorite spreadsheets. So spreadsheets have been around for a really long time. Uh, Graham first declared them deprecated, I think, three years ago. Uh, they still survive. Um, ideally, we would love a world where we didn't need to use spreadsheets because that would mean that we had IG tooling that did everything that we wanted it to do and did it in a super timely fashion because we change things regularly uh, and would support the latest version uh, and would give you a nice table-like interface because there are times when you want a table-like interface to mess around with stuff. Uh, Forge has a table-like interface um, that works for some things, um, but not necessarily for everything that you want to be able to manipulate, particularly when you're adding custom mappings and stuff like that. Forge is getting better, um, and if Forge ever comes to a place where it supports the latest and greatest version within a few days of there being a latest and greatest version and does a couple of other things, then I might actually agree to Graham's request to make templates or make spreadsheets go away forever. Spreadsheets uh, are problematic in that they are not terribly Git friendly. Um, if you are the only one authoring an IG, uh, spreadsheets are fine uh, because you're the only one who's messing around with stuff. But if somebody else edits a spreadsheet and commits it to Git and then you edit the same spreadsheet and then you try to merge, you're not going to be in for a very happy time. Um, generally, the best thing to do is uh, open your, your original spreadsheet and then look at the diff and try to guess what the changes were in the other one. Uh, or better yet, Skype the person or uh, contact them on chat.fire.org and say, what did you change? And make the same changes again, because uh, trying to merge is next to impossible. Uh, we have actually fixed that problem uh, in the uh, way that we use spreadsheets in Fire Core specification. Uh, and Graham and I have talked a little bit about whether we should put that into the IG publisher or not. My guess is what we'll probably do with spreadsheets in the IG Publisher soon-ish. Um, and those of you who have heard me talk about when we're migrating to Jira know exactly what soon-ish could potentially mean. Uh, that could be a few years from now, possibly, uh, although I would love it to be sooner, uh, is to be able to save from a spreadsheet as a structure definition and load from a structure definition into a spreadsheet so you're actually committing the same source as everything else. But right now, that's not the case. We take spreadsheets and we will turn them, the publisher process will turn them into uh, XML and JSON representations of the resource, but we do not have any way to go from XML or JSON into spreadsheet. So once you author something in Forge, there is no way to put it into spreadsheet form, which kind of sucks because there are situations where that would be useful. There is a set of instructions for authoring spreadsheets, um, which is the first tab of the spreadsheet. Uh, and why do I have to enable editing on every single page? That's a silly thing to do. Um, so I'm not going to walk through all of the different steps to authoring other than to say there's a wiki page, go read it if you need to. Uh, there will be a base spreadsheet in the template that we're going to give you because as of five minutes ago it works. Uh, and so you'll be able to use that as a starting point if you want to use the spreadsheet approach, but you absolutely do not need to. Uh, there's a metadata page where you can list what are the profiles that you have. Uh, with spreadsheets, you can actually have a whole bunch of profiles in a single file if that's useful to you. Um, you also indicate what is the uh, base URL for your extensions. Uh, and then you go in and you define your profiles. And it's uglier than a tool like Trifolia or Forge because Trifolia or Forge know what is allowed in the resource and will only let you select elements that are allowed in the resource at that particular point. Uh, with a spreadsheet, you can type whatever you like and you don't know that you got it wrong until you try to run the build process, at which point it'll blow up and say, I have no clue what that is. Um, and sometimes it'll say that with a really coherent, smart 
error message, which is clear what's going on, and sometimes it'll just spit out weird stuff, and you have to figure out that, oh, yeah, that's because I spelled questionnaire wrong. Um, I had one of those 10 minutes ago. Uh, you can do with spreadsheets pretty much anything that uh, the profiling methodology permits, which is, at the moment, more capable than any of the other tools um, because the spreadsheet is the easiest thing for us to hack uh, and incorporate new and cool features when they come about, whereas the other tools have a whole bunch of user interface considerations that we don't worry about because we're just using a ugly grid. Uh, the nice thing about spreadsheets is that you can do things like this. What are all the elements that I have that have, actually there's no bindings there. Um, so what are all the elements that I have that are must support? Quickly filter on those or go take a look and see uh, where do I have mappings and filter on those or filter on mappings that contain a particular thing. And that's useful to do, particularly when you're working with a large profile uh, to be able to quickly filter in or just go down a column and plug in values for a map. Um, if you are using uh, the XML format, that's not so easy to do. And it's very easy to, to miss things or to not see things as clearly uh, as you can in a simple filterable table like view. So that's really what this is for. Uh, you can create profiles in it. There's also a tab closer to the end where you can define extensions. Um, and again, you're just indicating what uh, is the uh, place where the extension can appear, what's the code for the extension, and all of the same kinds of elements that you'd be specifying elsewhere, cardinalities, vocabulary bindings, etc. One of the limitations of the two-dimensional spreadsheet view is when you've got deep nesting things like full definition of the binding, hard to put all of that into a single cell, so we actually define that as a separate cell uh, over here, so the bindings actually get shared across multiple um, profiles. Sometimes that's helpful from a maintenance perspective, sometimes not so much. Questions on spreadsheets. So you, basically we are giving you a quick round trip of all of the different tooling approaches that can exist, uh, and then you will get a chance to play with them later this afternoon. Yeah, the, the publisher should actually blow up and yell at you. Um, if it's not, then please tell us. Um, but yeah, the, the, the spreadsheet will let you do things that the other tools won't. Sometimes that's a benefit, um, sometimes not so much. Um, um, we have not tried with Google Sheets. Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the target endpoint for this is probably Excel acts as your user interface, but saves and loads canonical um, either JSON or XML uh, structure definitions because that way you can work with whatever user interface you prefer at the time and you can actually switch back and forth. That's probably where we went when I end up and investigating additional ways of trying to make Excel behave better is probably not our priority. We might look at um, using uh, Google Sheets as an alternative. The challenge is there are organizations where you can't use Excel, there are organizations where you can't use Google, and basically there isn't an easy win no matter what we do. So. Yeah, do, you do, your, do your original authoring in something that tells you what's allowed, and then go and do all your mappings and checking your must supports in a spreadsheet type view makes a lot of sense from an authoring perspective. Yes? The, te the template? Uh, so we haven't told you where to, you're find, gonna find your IG template yet, because I haven't committed it. 
Um, but before we, we turn you loose and make you actually do stuff, we will tell you where to find it. And the latest and greatest one will be there. And we will maintain it there going forward. So is work still going on on ClinFire? Uh, yes. Uh, ClinFire is uh, an environment for authoring instances. Um, it's profile authoring capabilities are not they're targeted at clinicians who want to create some really simple profiles for supporting whatever it is that they're doing and creating example instances. It's not re doesn't have the breadth of capability that we would think would be necessary uh, to use in authoring an IG. I mean, David does all sorts of wild and cool things, so maybe six months from now it will be because he found a spare weekend and will do something like that. Um, but right now, it, it's not in the set of tools that we think are complete enough for, for use in this, in, in this class in terms of creating IGs for publication. Um, well, in the new publication mechanism, so long as you stick it in the right folder and it has a name that ends in dash spreadsheet.xml, um, it'll just work. Um, there's magic now. Uh, the key thing to remember is that when you're saving a spreadsheet, it does need to be saved as XML. Don't save it in the traditional Excel format. So you can, when you do a save, you do files, save as, um, and XML spreadsheet, which apparently is back from 2003, is the format that you want, because at least that gives you a hope in Git. Um, you have zero hope in Git if you save it as a binary. And the tooling also cannot read it if it's a binary. Any other questions on spreadsheets? All right, who's next?